Hello everyone and welcome to a Thanksgiving edition of my playing uh, PTCGO. In order of Thanksgiving I'm actually playing with rounds and uh, after all the eating we'll all be doing we will be quite rotund. Um, here I'm playing against I'm not sure what type of deck yet but I do see fire energy so that's not too much of a clue but I do see superior energy retrieval so it's probably an Embor variant of some sort, since that card makes sense in that. I'm going to start off with uh, Palpitoad, or sorry, Timple, I get these things confused, and a Meloetta on the bench. I'm going to draw a card because my opponent mulliganed it twice, and uh, Thanksgiving is only in the US. I'm, I think Canada celebrated it last month. So my opponent is going to start off with Reshiram and the active, and a Rayquaza EX on the bench. They will attach a fire to Reshiram and Skyla for something, um, potentially a level ball, and that's exactly what they go for. And maybe they will confirm that this is Raybor if they get a Tepig. If they get something else, it will be quite shocked, since I don't really see why you would play uh, Reshiram and Embor and not, uh, sorry, Reshiram and Rayquaza and not play Tepig. And we do see a Tepig hit the bench and my opponent um, passes because they can't attack since they did go first. Here I'm going to Ultra Ball away a Water Energy and a Juniper in order to get myself a Meloetta, a second one. I could play that Juniper I have in hand, but I don't think I want to. I do have a whole evolution line in hand right now. I figure uh, I should keep those. I can also play Hypnotoxic Laser or attack, but I don't really want to in case I can't evolve uh, fully, then my opponent will have the chance to outrage for a knockout, and I really don't want to see that happen. So my opponent rare candies into Embor here. They're definitely not what I want to see. They can use Inferno Fandango, but it looks like they don't have anything to draw more cards, so they just pass. Here, uh, I can evolve my active now, so I will play Hypnotoxic Laser. Um, I put my opponent to sleep. I will evolve into Oh, well, I wanted to evolve into Palpatoad, but I decided to risk it and see if I can get a Seismitoad, so I Junipered. Unfortunately, I did not. So here I'm just going to attack with Vibration for 20, since my opponent is weak to that. And my opponent going into my opponent's turn, he still needs to get energy in hand. If he cannot, he's really going to put himself at a disadvantage and really allow me to roll through his uh, Pokemon. So he just passes and does wake up between turns. I'm going to end here. I don't really get anything all that useful. I get Silver Bangles, which I will attach to my Pokemon on the bench. But other than that, I'm just going to Vibration again for 20. And my opponent's down to 60 HP. He really needs to do something quickly. That end might have helped him more than it helped me. But let's see what happens. So he's still one energy short of being able to attack with Reshiram. If he attaches he can knock me out with Outrage here but I don't know if uh, it's worth the energy attachment here. He might just be saving it up to power up Rayquaza. He puts down a uh, non-EX Rayquaza or little Rayquaza as some people call it. The one from Dragon Vault. And finally I get a rare candy and I can Evolve into Seismitoad, so I will evolve my active into Seismitoad. At this point, uh, I now have <laughs> enough Pokemon to do 300 damage, thanks to everything except uh, Timple in play knows round at this point. So, if I can get another Pokemon with round, I will be able to one-shot all his EXs on the side of on his side of the field. So I take my first prize, and it's a Water Energy. My opponent's going to send up Rayquaza, the non-EX variant, maybe to buy himself a turn. But he seems to be really having really bad luck. And for whatever reason, he's not running into energy of any type for whatever reason. So if he can't get lightning or fire, then he's pretty much uh, out of luck. So uh, he's taken quite a bit here. I don't know what he's trying to do. But if he can attach a Lightning Energy, I believe he can Shred. But it looks like he's going to Ultra Ball. Maybe try to get another Embor in play. 
since his is pretty vulnerable right now. Uh, so he puts down a Tepig. I do have an escape rope in hand, so I could use that to knock out potentially something useful to him. He's going to full first tool scrapper though. Uh, if I escape rope, he'll probably just send up Tepig, so I don't really want to use it quite yet, so I'm just going to chorus. Uh, I did play down another sil silver bangle on my benched seismitoad. Here I'm going to use a dowsing machine to get rid of two cards from my hand to get an ultra ball. Now that I have that, I can get rid of two more cards from my hand to get a seismitoad. And with this, everything on my side of the field will know round, so I'll be able to do 180 damage. So this is exactly the position you want to get in, and the quicker you can do it, the better. But with that, I do 180 damage, and more, that's more than enough to knock out Rayquaza. So now I, my opponent has to send something up, and as expected, he sends up Tepig, so it's kind of good that I, I decided not to use that escape rope. But they will call rest for 7 here, so maybe they'll be able to start putting some energy in play right now. But I do have the uh, chorus in hand of my own. If I can get an escape rope, I can knock out either Embor or Rayquaza. He plays a catcher and it fails. And if I can do that, that'll really put him at a huge disadvantage right now. So it looks like he's using Inferno Fandango to attach three energy onto Rayquaza, but they're all fire. He puts down another Rayquaza. It doesn't look like he has enough energy to attack. And there is a Skyro bridge in play, so he can always use that to retreat. I play Chorus, and I get just what I wanted. So now that I have an escape rope, I will use it. Um, I'm going to wait for him to send something up. It doesn't matter what he sends up. It'll be crucial to his strategy, and I will do some serious damage if I knock it out. And all I will do is just send one of my benched Seismitoads into the active spot so I can use round and take the knockout here. So my opponent is taking a while. I, I'm pretty sure it's a tough decision for him. Does he sacrifice Ereiquaza? Does he sacrifice Embor? Um, I don't know. I would probably send up the Ereiquaza with no energy attached to it. But instead he sends up Embor, um, which will hurt his energy attaching capabilities. I'm going to use Round for 360 damage. So it's doing massive damage here. And it will take a prize. My opponent sends up Tepig, and it looks like I may be able to sweep this game. He's going to end here, uh, leaving me with three cards. And one of those, uh, fortunately for me, is an escape rope. So I'll be able to pull the same shenanigans I just did and take out one of those Rayquazas on the bench. So it's just sort of showing off that even though Catcher is out of, the, out of really serious play, you can still do a lot with escape rope. So here I'm going to attach a water energy onto my benched seismitoad and do exactly what I just described. So I'm going to use escape rope. Um, he's probably going to send up Rayquaza, the one with no energy attached to it, and that'll be his next sacrifice. Um, and he does just that. And I'm just going to go around and set up, send up another seismitoad, use round for 180 and the knockout. At this point, I've taken five prizes, and my opponent has yet to take one. So with Tepig in the active spot, things are not looking good for my opponent. If he can evolve this guy after retreating it, he might stand a, sh a chance, but I don't know if that's all that likely. But we do see an Ultra Ball here. Will it be for an Embor? No, it's actually for a Tepig. And then we see an N, so he's going to end me down to one card. And unfortunately for him, it's Meloetta. It knows round. <laughs> so if he knocks anything out on my side of the field, I have a rounder to replace whatever he knocks out. So my opponent sends up Rayquaza. He's going to be able to uh, knock out my active Seismitoad since he hits me for 180. I will send up one of my bench Seismitoads. I can put down Meloetta and use round for the knockout. So thank you guys for walk, uh, watching. Uh, have a happy and safe Thanksgiving and potentially Black Friday if you guys are into that. Bye.